Welcome. In this video, I'll be talking about some of the basic ideas behind the MapReduce model. This video should help you understand the MapReduce framework and the, some of the ideas behind it. Let's start by looking at how we can process large volumes of data. Say you have some kind of data that's about 200 megabytes in size. This data will typically fit into the average computer and can more or less be easily processed by a single PC, depending on the type of computation. Now imagine that you had data that was about 2 petabytes big. That's 2 times 10 to the 9 megabytes. This information will surely not fit into a single machine. Nor can it be processed by a single machine irrespective of the type of computation. This type of data will have to be processed by a cluster of machines. So what's involved in programming a cluster of machines? Well, you have to find ways to partition the input. You need to distribute the work among the computers in the cluster and find ways in which you can coordinate the work between the machines in the cluster. For example, you need to find out ways in which machines can signal when they've completed some kind of work or when they're waiting for data from another machine. Finally, you have to devise methods by which the results are aggregated from the machines and sorted somewhere where it's useful. It's important to know that there are environments and frameworks that can help you with this. One famous example is MPI. MPI or message passing interface is a mechanism that helps in passing messages between the nodes of a cluster. However, you still need to handle each of these cluster management steps by yourself in MPI, as MPI only helps in the message passing part of programming distributed computers. One popular solution that's available that has simplified large-scale computation is MapReduce. MapReduce is a programming model for processing large data sets with a parallel distributed algorithm on a cluster. Like the name, MapReduce consists of two primary stages, map and reduce, as well as a few stages in between that is handled by the framework. In the map stage, you apply a computation on all data items. This is typically done to extract or filter something that you need from the input data. Once this is done, the intermediate data is sorted and shuffled in some order to the reduce phase, which allows you to compute on similar data items to aggregate, summarize, filter, or transform the data. Finally, the results of the reduce phase are made available as the output. Suppose you wanted to count the number of times the word Apple appears in all of the books in the library. How could you solve this problem, especially if you had enough number of people to help you? Well, one way to think about it is you could divide the work. That is, you divide the number of books among your friends and ask them to shout out each time they saw the word Apple. And then you sit and listen for these uh, utterances by your friends, and then you aggregate them. Now, suppose you wanted to count the number of times all fruits appeared in these books, not just apple. Well, you can give the same instructions to your friends helping you, and you can just ask them to yell out anytime they see any type of fruit. In fact, you could have a few additional friends listening in uh, for mentions of fruit and then noting them down. In this case, you need to make sure that each friend is the one responsible to aggregate all the mentions of a particular fruit, say blackberries, so that you can finish the process there and then you don't have to combine the results once all of this has been noted. You can have multiple aggregators, each one working on a distinct set of fruits. So what we've just witnessed is a convoluted example of a MapReduce workflow applied to a real-world scenario. Each of the stages are outlined here. The map stage is the portion where your friends are reading the books in parallel and you're filtering out all the mentions of fruits. While on the other side, those listening in for the mentions of fruits and aggregating them are the reducers. There is a phase called shuffle, but this is managed by the framework for us. Taking a slightly deeper look, you have some sort of input in which, in this case, these are books. When you actually program this in MapReduce, you need to think of this as key value pairs. The books are converted into new key value pairs, K prime and V prime, denoting the fruit and the number of times that the fruit has been seen at the end of the map phase. Finally, the output of the reducers produce yet another set of key value pairs, K double prime and V double prime, denoting the final value of each fruit. Let's take an even deeper look. In the map phase, the input data is first split into parts and assigned to individual mappers. Each map task will work on its portion of the data and output key value pairs. The key in the key value pair will be used to determine the reducer that should handle the pair during the shuffling phase. The values that are output in the map stage are simply messages sent from the mapper to a reducer. In this example, it is the number of times that a particular fruit was seen in the map phase. In this case, it's one. In the shuffle phase, the output of a mapper is sorted by keys and split among the available reducers. Each key is always assigned to exactly one reducer. 
In the reduce phase, each reducer will work on one or more keys. The output is the sorted key value pairs from all mappers, and the output is based on some user-defined computation on those key value pairs. Once all the reducers are finished executing, the output can be collected from all the reducers. So, in MapReduce, the programmer needs to provide the map and reducer functions, as well as the location of the input and output data. On the other hand, the framework takes care of partitioning the data, scheduling the program's execution across a set of machines. It performs the group by key, which is the sort and shuffle step, handles machine failures, and then manage any required intermachine communication while the framework executes your program. So you may ask, where is the parallelism in all of this? Well, the map task can execute in parallel across a cluster of machines. At the same time, reduce tasks also run in parallel, each working on a different set of keys. Remember that there is a barrier between the map and reduce phases. Reducers cannot compute until all map tasks have finished executing. This is because of the property in MapReduce, if you remember, that ensures that all values of a particular key must go to the same reducer. So let's take a look at a very brief history of MapReduce. MapReduce itself was inspired by Lambda Calculus, which is an integral part of the Lisp programming language. MPI, a popular cluster computing framework, also has gather and scatter functions which allows for the assignment of work similar to the MapReduce model, but not quite. In 2004, Google released the MapReduce paper, outlining the techniques that they use in their data centers and search indexing systems. This marks the birth of the modern MapReduce era. Between 2006 to 2008, the Apache Hadoop project was formed, with Hadoop 1.0 evolving as a result. It's important to note that Hadoop is the only open source version of MapReduce that's available. In 2013, the most significant update to Hadoop project, Yarn, was revealed with a new scheduling system. Now, there are a number of ways in which you can interact with MapReduce. You can write a native MapReduce program in the Hadoop framework. Here, you create instances of the Map and Reduce classes in Java and override the functions with your own, implementing the logic required to execute your MapReduce program. Another way to write a MapReduce program is to write a streaming MapReduce job. Here, you supply your own executable programs to act as the mapper and reducer. They simply read and write to and from standard input and standard output. Finally, you can use higher-level abstractions such as Pig or Hive, which are languages and frameworks that compile into MapReduce jobs.